What's up guys, Matt back again, and today we're gonna be doing an overview of Ichiban Kuji. Yeah, not a figure, Ichiban Kuji itself. We're gonna go over the history, details, everything we can, so that you can walk away from this video and think, yeah, I learned something today. But like always guys, please remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification so that way you get notified whenever I upload a brand new video. Like this video if you enjoy it, and of course comment your thoughts down below in the comment section so that we can have a discussion about this. Also, if you'd like to become a member of this channel and get access to the Discord server, you can see information on that down below. Now before we dive into what Ichiban Kuji is, I'm going to show you a few figures, and I'd like to ask you which one you think is an Ichiban Kuji or an Ichibancho figure. If you guess this one, then you are correct. Now, why did I ask this question? So I wanted to quickly show, at least at a glance, some of the differences between Ichiban Kuji and what we call a prize figure. Prize figures are a lot less rare and a lot more affordable compared to their Ichiban Kuji counterparts. They're typically also lower in quality and detail compared to Ichiban Kuji. Now then, what is Ichiban Kuji? Ichiban Kuji is what you would call a sure win lottery. Think of it as a raffle or a lottery where there are fixed prizes that guarantees you winning at least one every time you play. You typically buy a ticket, then open the ticket and see what kind of prize you've won. Every ticket allows you to win a prize, and as with all lotteries, there are bigger prizes and smaller prizes within. Every prize has a different letter, and I'll explain what that is in just a minute. These letters will determine the hierarchy of rarity that this prize is within the Ichiban Kuji. Usually the most rare and valuable figures are within prizes A and D of a typically sized Ichiban Kuji. Prizes A and B might only have one or two quantities each within the Kuji, while prizes C and D have three or four quantities. The smaller prizes are usually on the later letters like E, F, G, and they're a lot less valuable and desirable. They also have a lot more in quantity for you to pull, so it's stacked against you to get the rarer ones. So here's how a typical Ichiban Kuji goes. First, you'll grab a Kuji purchase ticket and take it to the cash register. You'll pay for the Kuji and then draw it from the box. Peel the ticket back and reveal the letter that corresponds to the winning prize that you just got. Grab your prize and celebrate. In addition to these steps, you'll also have a chance to win the last one prize and possibly the double chance prize. To win the last one prize in a Kuji set, which is usually the most desirable and rarest figure within the entire set, you'll have to have purchased the very last Ichiban Kuji ticket within that raffle. And just for context, there's usually 60 to 80 tickets in one Kuji raffle. In addition to that, you'll also have the chance to win the rare and illustrious Double Chance Prize. Double Chance Prizes are listed on a code within the back of your Kuji ticket that you can submit online for a chance to win. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing and you're following along closely. I know it can be a little confusing because if you're like me, you haven't really seen something like this done in America. Speaking of America, you might be more familiar with Ichiban Kuji's overseas counterpart, Ichibancho. These are the release of Ichiban Kuji figures for overseas territories, like America, Canada, Europe, many others. Now while the figures are exactly the same as the figures released within Ichiban Kuji, you'll notice that usually the last one prize, double chance prize, and the smaller prizes like the cups, the towels, etc. aren't included for the overseas releases. The only differences that you might spot within these releases is that the art on the box might be a little bit different, but the biggest change is the Toei animation sticker that's usually located at the top of the box that also shows the authenticity of the figure that you just got. The color of the Toei animation sticker will also reflect which territory that it's from, which you can see on this chart right here. Now if the box holding your figure doesn't have a Toei animation sticker, there may be cause for concern that you bought a bootleg. If you want to know how to spot a bootleg Dragon Ball figure, watch this video right here. But please note that double chance prizes and last one prizes typically don't have a Toei animation sticker on them. Dragon Ball has had Ichiban Kuji releases for years, and notably they started around when Dragon Ball Z Kai started airing in Japan. 
There are lots of people within the figure collecting community that love these older figures, but me personally, I started collecting my favorite type of figure, Masterly's figures, when they started in 2017. Now, Masterly's are basically the premier figures in all Dragon Ball Ichiban Kujis today. Other figures included within Ichiban Kuji are King Cluster and Sawfix, which I will explain in later videos down the line. Here's every single Ichiban Kuji that was released within the Masterly's, King Cluster, and Softvix line for Dragon Ball.
I have a ton of videos on my channel explaining each figure within these sets in detail, so if you want to check those out, watch these videos right over here. And of course, subscribe once again, as I will be reviewing future sets and sets that I've missed since my break on the channel. So every big hobby has a price tag attached to it. Remember, I mentioned prize figures at the beginning of this video. At those figures, they're typically 20 to 30 US dollars each. Pretty affordable, and you usually get what you pay for. Ichiban Kuji, though, are much higher in price due to their size and quality. If you're importing these figures from Japan, prepare to pay anywhere from 50 to up to 300 US dollars for these figures. The reason some of the prices get so high is because some figures become very hard to find, they were very limited in release, or they were a very rare figure in general, like a last one prize. Heck, sometimes these Kuji figures don't even get an Ichibancho release. There was a Super Dragon Ball Heroes Kuji that came out that did not get an entire international release. Only the Super Saiyan Blue Vegito within the set got an international release. Back in 2017 though, Ichibancho figures were selling for anywhere between $30 to $50 on average. But starting in 2022, I believe the effects of COVID and of course the hobby growing started inflating the prices for these figures. You can expect to pay anywhere from $60 to $90 today on average for Ichibancho releases of figures. While these prices are a little bit higher, I will at least say that Bandai's been doing a much better job at doing international releases for all of these Kuji sets. So to conclude this video, I'm going to tackle a question that a lot of people might be asking me. Why do I love and recommend these figures so much? Well, Mr. Viewer, who apparently hasn't been paying attention to this video, what, what are you doing? Ichiban Kuji has some of the most fun surrounding this entire hobby. A lot of these sets have their own identity like the Ginyu Force or History of the Film that focus on a specific theme and really brings a lot more life and fun around the entire release. They're also the highest of quality compared to any other officially released figure out there in my opinion. You have things like the Dragon Ball EX Ichiban Kuji series which takes these characters and themes and it looks like they've ripped them straight from a manga page. And while I do recognize the problems with Ichiban Kuji today, such as the higher prices and some of the figures being recycled in order to make lazier releases of new forms and characters, I still think that they've improved time and time again with each of their release, the number of releases, and the represented characters that a lot of fans have been begging for. So with that, you're pretty much an expert on Ichiban Kuji. So get out there and get collecting. Guys, thanks again for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you learned something, please let me know down in the comment section below. Like this video, share it with a friend, and of course, subscribe to the channel and become a member. Catch me on streams Tuesdays and Thursdays, and of course, look forward to upcoming reviews, knowledge-based videos, whatever I put out there. So until the next video, guys, I'll see you later.